Well, good morning. And welcome to a glorious morning here in Cambridge. Now, in today's video, we're going to dig into all of the numbers from June. How much did we generate? How much did we sell back to the grid? And more importantly, how much money did we make? Also, stick around to the end of the video because I've got a bit of, bit of a channel update for you. But I just wanted to show you what I've been up to for the last week since you saw the last video. Now, for those of you that will remember, I was changing out some of my fence-mounted solar panels. And the chief financial controller was heard to mutter, that's it, no more solar panels. Well, it didn't quite work out like that. So literally the next day after she said that, these turned up and I've now mounted them on the fence. So we've got four 450 watt panels behind me. And then if I spin around, we've got another two over there by the hot tub. And that means that these panels over here, these will catch the evening sun, obviously when we want to keep the hot tub nice and warm. And these panels, as you can see behind me, are already catching the sun and it's only just coming up to nine o'clock in the morning. So anyway, it is roasting out here. I'm gonna head inside where the air conditioning's on and we're gonna dig into all of the numbers. So there we are, we're back inside in the air conditioning um, where we can actually sit down and look at some of the numbers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through my generation stats for June. So just not just how much energy did we generate, but how much did we use? What are the major things within the house that you used a lot of that energy? How much did we export? And probably the most important thing, you know, how much money did we make um, from our system? Now, I'm going to go through this at quite a high level. Obviously, if there are any questions, you can hit me up in the comments and I'm more than happy to share that information. Now, I would say one, I'm not sharing this information to show off or anything like that. The objective is, is to give you uh, an example of what a system like mine would generate. And so if you're starting out on your solar journey and you're wondering, you know, what's realistic? Um, you can look at mine and you can say, OK, well, that's one model. And then I would highly recommend, you know, go and look at um, Tim and Kat's Green Walk. Tim does a great presentation of all of his stats. Um, so go and take a look at him. Um, go and look at the EV Puzzle is another channel, again, where you can see what different systems, different sizes, different locations, different roof aspects, all of those kind of things, that how they come together, um, and that will let you give you an idea of what a real-world system will generate. Okay, so let's dive into some charts, and I think a good place to start is just a statement of fact that 2025 is looking like a year for the record books. Um, what you can see here is a chart directly from my solar edge system that shows the generation just of the solar edge system. We'll come on to the uh, to the EcoFlow system in a moment, but as you can see there, the green bars are 2025, uh, and the purple bars those are 2024. Now I should say at this point, you know, we have generated as much energy in the first six months of 2025 as we generated in the whole of 2024. Now, there is one caveat here, and that is in June last year, we actually did some maintenance work to our system. That's why you can see, if you look at the purple bars, they kind of rise each month until you get to June and there's a bit of a dip. And that was because um, from our system, we took our two kilowatt array offline. We took the old panels off. We replaced them with four 40 watt panels. So we added an extra two kilowatts of capacity. But even with an extra two kilowatts of capacity, we're still having a record year. Um, this chart shows you the generation sources, so the different arrays that we have. Um, now, what I'll actually do is I'll, I'll, I'll put a video up now that just shows you all the different panels around my house so you can see how they're all located. But we effectively have four arrays, um, and I'll talk a little bit more in a moment about the, the fence-mounted system because uh, you'll have seen from the intro video there's been some changes there. But this was with the old fence-mounted system, so we have our main array on our south by southwest facing roof. Um, that's the green bars, or green portions of the bars. We have our, our front facing panels. Those are on the north by northeast facing aspect. So those are the opposite to the to the back of the house. Those are the gray parts of the bars. The blue bar is at the bottom. Those those are our garage mounted solar panels, and the little yellow icing on the top of the cake that is our fence mounted system. 
Now there's a couple of things that jump out at me here. If you look at the blue to start with, so these are the four uh, 400 watt panels that sit on our garage roof. You'll notice that we reached kind of a peak in about April and they've kind of been pretty consistent April, May and June. And I think that's because those panels, they are producing as much as they can possibly produce. Um, we're not getting anything more out of them. Um, you know, at some point in the future, maybe a few years down the line, when five and 600 watt panels are the same size as 400 watt panels, then we might swap them out for more generation at that point. But I think we're getting our money's worth out of the garage array at this point. Then you take a look at the, the green section. So that's obviously, that's our main array. That is the South by Southwest facing array. And um, that continues to climb up each month as we get it towards the, the solar maximum in June. So again, very, very happy with the production there. But it's the north by northeast facing panels that these are the ones that traditional solar installers will tell you don't waste your money, don't put panels on your house facing north. And I'm here to tell you they are wrong. They are wrong, wrong, wrong. Um, so if we actually take a look at the next chart, this is just that single array. So again, you can see in the winter, they really don't produce an awful lot. The whole of January, they produced a whole 40 kilowatt hours. But now that we're into June, um, we're at 426 kilowatt hours from that north by northeast facing array. And because the sun rises, uh, certainly in, in here in the east of England, at about 4 a.m., the sun starts to break the horizon. Those panels start generating at about 5 o'clock, 5.15 in the morning. And they will continue to go most of the day, um, obviously once the sun's completely moved around into the south west sort of aspect of the of, of the horizon um, they start to drop off but they add a significant chunk to our generation each month and as you can see we're, we're nearly half a megawatt hour um, in june from our north northeast facing panels so absolutely worth it if you're installing solar and you've got a north facing roof and everyone's telling you yeah you probably don't want to put panels on there put panels on it they will extend your generation day massively. Like I say, out we are, we're just past the the twenty uh, first of June now, about a couple of weeks, and we are generating from five o'clock in the morning through till nine p.m. at night. So that gives us a massive generation day as we get into the summer. Now. We don't live like hermits. Um, I use this phrase a lot. Um, we use a lot of energy. And uh, as we're, we're phasing out our gas supply, um, you know, that, that's not going to go down. But I thought this was an interesting graph. This comes from my um, home assistant setup. Um, it monitors my electricity meters. It looks at what are we importing, what are we exporting. So what you can see there on each of the days, the blue portion of the graph is uh, what we actually brought in from the electricity grid. Now, you might think, well, with all this solar, why are you bringing energy in from the electricity grid? Well, we do it for a couple of reasons. One is we grid charge our batteries. Um, so we make sure that the, the batteries are full at the beginning of the day. And that is so that all of that solar that we start generating from 5.30 in the morning doesn't go to fill our batteries up, actually goes to, uh, to, to export because we, make, we buy the energy in at 7p a kilowatt. We can sell it at 15 pence a kilowatt. So by having the batteries full, we're immediately selling the energy at 15 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, the orange underneath that is what we actually use so you can see we're not minimal users of electricity by any stretch of the imagination um, some days maybe you know we're, we're using sort of between 10 and 15 kilowatt hours in the house but if you look towards the end of the month there you'll notice those those orange bars start to get bigger and that's because we turned on the air conditioning um, certainly in some of those late June days where we had the really, really hot, sticky nights, um, we had the air conditioning units running upstairs in our house, cooling all the bedrooms down. Um, and looking outside, it will probably be running them again today. And then obviously the purple underneath, those are the negative numbers. That is what we actually exported each day. So you'll see, you know, some days uh, as we get in towards around about the 5th of, of June, we had a few cloudy days. We didn't export a huge amount. But, you know, we're regularly exporting in excess of 30 kilowatt hours. Um, no problems at all. Um, unsurprisingly, we do actually track, almost, not down to the individual device level, but certainly down to uh, areas of the house and obviously anything that is a high energy use device, we track that as well. So, uh, as I say, air conditioning became a thing this month. Um, they will be on what we call the front socket, so that's the, the purple bars. So if you look at the sort of the third 
third color up in the stack there, you'll notice it sort of ticks along. As you get towards the end of the month, you can start to see that those, those bars got bigger, and that's because that's where the air conditioning units were plugged in. Um, you know, we have three pretty heavy energy use devices, obviously two electric cars. Um, my wife drives a lot more than I do, so she used about 73 kilowatt hours um, overnight charging, and then uh, my car only used about 33 kilowatt hours. So those don't use an awful lot. Our heat pump used 56 kilowatt hours of energy. And you probably think, well, why, why are you running the heat pump at this time of the year? Well, the heat pump is doing its thing. It's, it's working its magic. Um, we're not obviously using it to heat the house. The house is very warm, hence the reason for the air conditioning. But we're using it to heat hot water. And throughout the whole month of June, we used 56.5 kilowatt hours of electricity to generate hot water for our showers. Um, and that produced 256 kilowatt hours of hot water or heat to go into the hot water. That gave us a, a coefficient of performance of 4.53. Now for hot water, that's amazing. Normally you get a higher coefficient of performance when you're heating your house and a lower one for hot water and you kind of average them out. But we're not heating the house and we're still getting a coefficient of performance of 4.53. And that's because of the way the heat pump works. It's taking the heat energy that is already in the air, and there's a lot of it in the air at the moment, and it's using that efficiently to transfer that into the hot water tank. Um, and that's the reason we don't use our solar hot water diverter anymore. Um, it, we turn this thing on about once every two weeks for a couple of hours at night just to boost the hot water to about 70 degrees to kill off any Legionella that might be uh, thinking about growing in the tank. But if we were to use this and just take that free solar energy that we would have exported and earned 15 pence per kilowatt hour for, it would have only given us a one-to-one -one ratio. So this for those that don't know, the way this device works is it controls the resistive heating element in your hot water tank. So you take a kilowatt of energy from your solar panels, you flow that into this device, and it then takes that one kilowatt, turns on the electric heating element, and turns that into one kilowatt of heat energy in your tank. So instead of producing 256 kilowatts of uh, heat energy, this device would only ever have been able to create 56.5 kilowatts of heat energy, and that's assuming it was absolutely 100% efficient. So that's the reason we don't use our solar hot water diverter, because we get four times as much heat by using the heat pump to heat the hot water than we would using that resistive heating element. And obviously, whilst we're using that uh, the heat pump to heat that energy, we're using less energy, we're getting more heat for it, and that means we can export more energy and make more money. So talking of money, how much did we spend? How much did we make? Um, so these are the charts from my Octopus Energy dashboard. Um, as you can see here, we imported 670 kilowatt hours of energy. Um, the big spike there was a, a day in the month where Octopus asked everybody to uh, to use up some spare energy. So we charged our cars there. But you can see we averaged between 20 and 30 kilowatt hours a day. Um, that cost us £63.22p. So for all of the energy we imported, and again, most of that energy we imported, we imported overnight. I would say 99% of that came in at the cheap rate. Um, if you look at the graph there, you, well, the, the one down the bottom right, you can see there's sort of three components to it. There's the standing charge along the bottom. There's the green, which is the off-peak energy that we buy at 7 pence per kilowatt hour. Then you might just be able to make out there's a tiny bit of pink frosting on the top there. Um, that's uh, anything that we brought in that wasn't at cheap rate. So 99.9% of our energy is brought in overnight and is stored in our batteries so that if we do need to, to use anything and maybe we're doing something after the sun goes down, we want to run the air conditioner in the evening after the sun's gone down, we can draw that power from our batteries and we'll only have paid seven pence per kilowatt hour for it. But so we, we spent £63.22 but we actually exported 970.113 kilowatt hours. Um, and that means Octopus paid us 145 pounds and 52 pence for uh, the energy that we exported. So we more than covered the cost of the energy that we imported. We actually covered that and still made a profit um, by exporting all of our excess solar.
Now, funnily enough, we actually exported 13% less in June than we did in May. And that was because we did have a couple of cloudy days and sort of they were more distributed through the month. Uh, so we didn't quite get the, um, the export that we would have done uh, we did in May. Now, we also made a slight change from what we did in May. Uh, during May, we would import the energy overnight. We would charge our home batteries up to 100%. We would then run the whole day, um, taking energy from the batteries as and when we needed it. And then late in the evening, we would then force export 10 kilowatt hours of energy from the battery. Now in June, we changed that. We just, we did exactly the same thing. We charged the batteries up overnight. We stored the energy in the batteries ready for use, but we didn't do the force exporting. Now the difference between the two is we would ex force export 10 kilowatt hours every single day in, in May, and we didn't force export anything in June. And the only difference between the two, we made 23 pounds more in May than we did in June from that force export. So the question really is, is it worth cycling your batteries, heavily pushing the energy in and out of them, for 23 quid? For me, not so much. Given we're already making a, a decent profit from our, from our solar export, um, putting the extra stress on the batteries for £23 just doesn't make sense to me. Um, we still have a little bit of gas, and we are in the process of uh, running some cables from our uh, distribution panel down into our kitchen so that we can we can replace our gas hob with an induction hob uh, that should hopefully be done in the next couple of weeks and then we can look at actually removing that gas completely so overall um, as I said we imported 62 pounds 23 pence of energy we spent 11 pounds 46 on gas uh, we exported 145 pounds 52 there was no free energy from Octopus this month. That means we ended up with a negative £93.75 pence bill. So Octopus paid me £93.75 for the whole of June. So when we look at that across the whole of the year, we're £151.12 pence in credit after the first six months of the year. Now, the second six months of the year generally aren't quite as cold at the end as they are at the beginning of January and February. So if everything continues to track the way they're tracking, we're looking at a profit of about 300, maybe 350 pounds by the time we get to the end of December. Now, for those of you that follow any of my live streams, you'll know my plan is that whatever we make over and above the zero pounds mark, uh, we're going to donate that plus all all of the profits from this YouTube channel, all of the referrals that you guys do. Um, if you're interested in an octopus referral for a heat pump, for solar or anything, you can find details um, down in the description of this video. But all of that money is gonna go to good causes. And uh, yeah, we've already made a, a, a significant chunk of that. We've, we've, we've earned about 4,000 pounds so far this year, all of which is gonna go to help people with their energy bills um, as they come in towards the end of the year. So that's my update for June. As you can see, we had a really, really good month. Um, July is looking to be no worse. Um, we did have a couple of, I would say, slightly overcast days at the beginning of July, but we're now we're now uh, sort of 10 days into July and it is scorching out there. Hence the reason that I'm sitting in here in the air conditioning. I'm gonna head back outside because I've got a couple of channel updates that I wanna share with you all. So I promised you before we wrap up for the day, a little bit of a channel update. Um, for the last six months, I've been putting out two videos a week, um, generally one on Tuesday and one on Friday. I'm afraid for the summer months, I'm going to trim that down a little bit and I'm going to commit to doing one video per week. Now, there might be the odd week where we slip out a second video, but I want to make sure, A, that the quality of the video stays the same, but I also want to be able to take on a few longer projects. I want to be able to show you something that you haven't already seen on the channel before. So we'll see what happens when we get to the end of the summer. We might go back to two a week, but at least one a week as we go forward into the summer. So watch out for new videos every Friday around about the middle of the afternoon. I hope you found this useful. If you have, a like and subscribe would be really appreciated. And if I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.